Mm -hmm. My take was completely to look at the objective situation in the National Register uh, of Citizens process at the ground. And uh, it was not uh, uh, with any agenda. And actually, we did not even have much information or knowledge systems to prejudice us, so we did not carry any baggage. And uh, we went with completely <coughs> open minds, with the open doors of perception and windows, open windows of enlightenment. And uh, as we uh, spoke across spectrum of people, first in Guwahati, uh, lawyers, activists, civil society groups, uh, individuals, journalists, uh, then we moved into uh, 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 Gualpala district, Barpera district, Kokrajhar, Mm, and Bongai Gao, and we travelled inside interiors of uh, uh, deep interior in villages uh, uh, and uh, uh, to s discover basically uh, what is happening to the National Register of Citizens process. Uh, while we came back on the last day, we were able to meet uh, the prof prof two former twice uh, Chief Minister Prafulla Manta for a, for a long discussion, and with uh, pr the former Chief Minister Tarun Gogoi also, along with other intellectuals. Uh, like uh, uh, Professor Hiran Gohen and uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Bora and other local intellectuals, lawyers, etc., journalists, editors, and of course we met also uh, Akhil Gogoi, social activist. In the end, uh, briefly, let me tell you very simple. Uh, let us not get into the complexity of the history of Assam because it's a pre-1947 <coughs> history is a, a complex history of part of being Greater Bengal. Uh, with Dhaka as the capital and larger geographical mapping. So pre-1947, it was an open border and it was a different scenario, British administration, etc. Uh, 1905, India, uh, Bengal partition, etc. We are not going into that. Post-47 also, we are only going to 1971. That is the tripartite uh, uh, accord between the Assam, uh, Asum, All Assam Students Union, uh, the state Assam government and the Rajiv Gandhi's uh, Congress government, Delhi, which uh, made 24th, uh, midnight of 24th August 1971 is the cutoff date. March, March, March. Uh, ha, March, sorry, uh, 24th August 1985 actually the uh, accord was signed. Uh, and um, 24th March, uh, midnight uh, 1971 cutoff date. That is before before that date, after that date anybody who comes is a foreigner. That is I think uh, 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 the basic criteria on which uh, uh, the National Register of Citizens is operating. And uh, by and large, I think the spectrum of the civil society, including the villagers and locals, including Tarun Gogoi, who said actually he started the NRC process. And the process slowed down after uh, there was <coughs> some massive protests in Barpeta on fudging of uh, uh, electoral lists and elimination of names from electoral lists. Uh, and then uh, there was a police firing and some three, four people died during Mr. Mr. Tarun Gogoi's regime. And then the process slowed down and uh, um, more committees, etc., were formed. The process actually began uh, uh, and uh, was spearheaded and fast tracked by the BJP led government, uh, in which our, our AGP is in an alliance, uh, which came to power in 2018. Of course, no human being, is an, uh, no human being can be treated as, you know, as, as, as outsider in this world. Everyone is part of this world. And geographically, you ca can be located somewhere or the other. And migrations are a process which is a complex process, which is for thousands of years has happened. It is it will continue to happen. Well, the Bangladeshis are not only in India; they are also in Pakistan. They are also in uh, South Africa. They are all over the place. And migrations across borders are something uh, as 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 uh, transparent and as continuous as infinite as changing of maps. Because maps also change continuously. Bangladesh did not exist before 1971. It was East Pakistan, and 19, before 1947, the map was different. Uh, so uh, we are also situated in a, in a here in a kind of human condition, which is a which is part of the location of the human human being. Ki where does the human being? Uh, what is the human being's residence on Earth? But that is a philosophical question here. The simple question is that the NRC process has been activated, and it has been activated through, as the report says, and we have tried to make a very balanced, impartial, and objective report. It is not based on uh, it is not based on any uh, you know a feeling of uh, disharmony against any regime, whether it's a BJP government or a Congress government. We are not involved in the political party process here. We are only involved in the in in the in the in the in the uh, tracking down of what is happening or the mapping of what is happening in the NRC project in the ground. What we found through documentary evidence and through our own objective uh, thing, as a, as a journalist, I found several cases where the mother is, elderly mother is in jail. And the jail is also the detention camp. There are six uh, detention camps right now. Kokrajhar has got a women's detention camp. 
most of the district jails have been turned into detention camps and the people have no rights, prisoner rights. They don't have fundamental rights, their teachers are under trials. And uh, like Gwalpara district jail, we did go uh, and found out some information, but we were not allowed to go inside. But then local sources have told us, which we have quoted, there are 239 foreign nationals out there within course, of which 195 are D voters. Now, don't get you know confused because D voter is basically a doubtful voter. A doubtful voter is that in the foreign tribunal and, and the and the divisional bench of the high court. There's a divisional bench of the high court, which which is the next authority you can go after your petition is rejected in the foreigners tribunal. Petition means that you have to prove your identity. Uh, uh, in Assam, now situation is that you have to prove your identity. In the rest of the country, uh, some article f rule four in the citizenship rules, I don't have to prove my identity. If somebody has to ask me, the, then, then they have to prove my identity. Here, the, they have to, if the onus is on the, on the accused. And, and there are some 16 odd documents which have to be given. And, and then, uh, then, uh, uh, then that 16 odd documents have to be ratified with the foreigners tribunal. And then the foreigners tribunal, if you, if, you, if you don't agree or you want to go to appeal, you have to go to the high court. There's a divisional bench of uh, Judge Ujjal Bhuya is there. I, I heard that Judge Ujjal Bhuya has been changed uh, because the roster system was not being applied and there was a complaint that in, in Guwahati High Court also the roster system should apply as it is should be, uh, as was the demand of the four judges, uh, justices in the Supreme Court. So yesterday we heard the roster system was changed because Ujjal Bhuya has been changed and our new judge has come, which is a very significant thing because there's a lot of pressure on Ujjal Bhuya as much as the foreigners tribunal, uh, uh, because there were accusations, uh, there are controversies, there are there is fear, there is trauma, there is insecurity. I will not give you a lot of examples. I will give you a couple of examples. For this, I will tell you that we met a mother, we met a three elder uh, adult sons in uh, Jaipur village in Barpeta, and the, whose mother is in uh, deportation in jail, and uh, a father a father was an Indian citizen. Uh, the three sons are Indian citizens, but the mother has been declared a D voter. And D voter is not foreigner. D voter is that some of the documents are not correct. Like your school going certificate has your age, uh, to 90, uh, some age differences there between a middle school or small school. There's some discrepancy in the panchayat certificate. Some little, little, lot technical, uh, your village name has changed. A lot of people's villages name change in uh, Assam, as you would know that because the Brahmaputra flows in a very fierce manner. And there is a lot of erosion over history. Uh, villages disappear. And even revenue records disappear. Even documents disappear because if, a, if your village disappears and your, it floods, many times documents disappear. So many times people move from village to village and they have new villages. So their social identity and geographical identity also changes. So it's a very complex and difficult thing. For NRC also we think it's a very gigantic, difficult and complex process. And so we are not here to pass a judgment on the NRC. We are, going to say, we are only trying to say that there are anomalies which are happening on the ground. Like the mother's case. Like, uh, the, like Bakar Ali's case, which has been video recorded by uh, News Click, uh, of he met us in a highway and he came and he was in underground, he's hiding. And he, he's, his uh, birth certificate says 1985 birthday. He is forced to make his birth certificate, uh, sign that his birth is 1970, that's 1970 by the police, under duress. And he was forced to say that his village is Bangladesh, where his villages were not Bangladesh. And uh, he was declared a, a, a foreigner. Right? For 10 years, he would not have rights. But his mother and brother were, are Indians. Right? And he is a teacher in a government school. Then, then the, the police forces him to, in an SP office, the registrar office, he is forced to sign those documents where his age is changed from 85 to 70. Then he goes to appeal. After the appeal, they get so angry, apparently so angry, that they declare the mother and the brother also foreigner. Now, all three of them are under hiding. Because they, they are under hiding. And they met us in hiding. And they vanish into the darkness. But these are this is a case which we has come to us. We have to verify it. We are not saying that it's absolutely correct case. So as reporters, we would say reportedly or allegedly or the claim of Bakar Ali. But as similar many many cases we have found in many many places. One brother Zakir Ali is in jail. Family in abject poverty. Literally nothing in the house. They cut suparis to live. Mother is crying all the time. Daughter has dropped out of school. The village is also very poor. In, in, um, and they are in Gwalpara. And, and, and they, they don't know what to do. Because losing one's identity as a citizen is, a, is one of the losses we just cannot understand. It's like something, it's, a, it's like, a, it's like your, everything is gone. You don't belong to this country. You're a no man's land. 
So uh, I would just say very simply in brief that uh, a kind of a crisis is brewing in which could lead to lakhs of people or thousands of people directly affected in which there are accusations that the foreign tribunal, foreigners tribunal is not completely partial. That the foreigners tribunal is not completely not biased. That the foreigners tribunal is not completely efficient. And uh, that there are also accusations that evidence is being fudged. And that evidence D is being marked against people who have voted in the past and who have voted in the future. Or who might vote in the future, whose parents have voted. Your father, grandfather has voted, etc. And it's a very difficult thing to trace all documents. And some people's land documents have vanished. One of the most significant things which you must notice there, and I would conclude with that, is that condition of women. <coughs> Largely, women are getting affected because both. It's a large, let us think that let us let us accept the fact that people who are getting directly impacted are Bengali-speaking uh, religious and linguistic minorities, and there's no communal angle to it. It is just that they are being impacted. Among Bengali speaking, the tribals of Rajbongshis, who are the original inhabitants, and the Rajbongshis, whose language is a little Bangladeshi in their accent. Uh, in the Ahomiya also they speak is with the Bangladeshi accent. Uh, and there's a language synthesis also in, in, at a local level. And there's a lot of differences of language also, because uh, Assam is a very complex, demographically complex, culturally very complex uh, state. And also, it has, been, it has gone through impact of migration uh, over the years. Before 47, of course, 1947, 71 war, lakhs of people were given shelter. And let us also accept the fact that most of India welcomed them in 71. And it was a war which India participated. And uh, all of us paid 5 paisa tax on postcards. And there was a disease called Joy Bangla, which was the inflammation of eyes, uh, where we used to take locula. There was one locula yeah, eye drop. Actually. And all over the country, people were having eye, eye swollen eyes. But nobody felt bad that Bangladeshis are here. Because in 1971, we accepted the Bangladeshis as, as, you know, as, 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 as neighbors or as part of our own geographical entities in the subcontinent before partition. So women, women are having great problems because one, Villages change. Well, many of them, because it's a patriarchal society anyway, so they don't have birth certificates. Many of them don't have school certificates because they have not gone to school. Many of them don't even have marriage certificates. Their names change from, say, Khatum to Begum, or after death to Bewa. Huh? Or, or the villages change because they get married. Or, or, or their villages disappear because of erosion. So when they go, go to testify, they really don't have great documents to prove themselves. So they go to the panchayat. And the panchayat is the very, has got magisterial powers and gives a certificate. According to which the village elders, the neighbors, the local post office man, the local cop, everyone will be there and say, yeah, this girl was here, she studied here, we have seen her since childhood. She got married here, we went to her marriage. That is how so much of innumeration in India is done. Because innumerators go door to door and innumerators go to the village headman and they get an assessment that this is the village, these are people, seven people in the family, he's head of the family, he's, she's got married, gone away, etc. Or the village principal will come and ask, she's studying. Or the father will say, he's my daughter. She is my daughter. So now women are really facing a lot of problems there. And the huge number of women are directly impacted. So even Pati Khajila, the IS officer who has been appointed as nodal officer by Supreme Court, has said that there are about 40, 50,000 women directly employed. People are saying that it could move into tens of thousands. And many, many women are in prison. One pregnant woman was put in prison, whose entire family are, is Indian. And, uh, in, 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 and uh, she, uh, she was put in prison when she was pregnant. And then she came out because High Court allowed her to have a delivery. And she's right now in bail in complete uncertainty. Uh, uncertainty. Anytime she can. Her case is now in the Supreme Court. So uh, it's a kind of a very emotional, social uh, uh, crisis uh, um, combined with the fact that the NRC is a, a genuine process to identify the Hindi with Dood ka Dood or Pani ka Pani. You identify who's a foreigner, who's not a foreigner. And there, there is no logical uh, basis to not deny this logic. Because uh, there is a problem in, Kash uh, in Assam. And uh, a lot of Assamese people and the Assam, uh, uh, and, uh, the Assam movement had the problem that, ki, that, that demographically they are getting isolated, culturally they are getting dominated, etc. Huh? And there is a local angst also. So uh, we have to take con into consideration in a pluralist, democratic, secular society all viewpoints. So in that viewpoint, we will have to take that viewpoint that the fact that in post-1971, if there are foreigners, they should go back. But the fact is that the NRC being such a gigantic, complex, and difficult task, and the fact that the BJP government is there, and, and the fact that the BJP government, to many eyes and to locals, and as a journalist, I can say it is derived from an agenda, and there seems to be an agenda, uh, uh, and, and it is an agenda which locals feel is happening, 
of say partisan behavior or prejudice or bias in which both Bengali Hindus and Bengali Muslims are getting involved, in which genuine citizens might get directly impacted, or in which genuine Indians might get, you know, emotionally and socially and uh, and uh, politically isolated, and the rights, fundamental rights, can be taken away, which Tarun Gogoi has also said, and which uh, local intellectuals are feeling. I think there is a crisis situation there, and uh, and uh, one must look at it. So this report is kind of a uh, gateway to that crisis, not a solution to the crisis, but a gateway to the crisis in the sense that in mainstream India, people are not even thinking about it or talking about it, that in Assam, there might be a serious kind of a, a trauma, fear, mass insecurity developing. Thank you. Thank you.